And finally tonight, News Hour correspondent Spencer Michaels has a science unit report on engineers without borders. Doctors aren't the only ones crossing borders to help those in the developing world. In May, a team of American engineers hiked to a remote village in the mountains of Nepal to figure out how to bring clean water and sanitation to the people of Nam Saling. It's clogging the lines. The group from Engineers Without Borders USA was led by its founder, Bernard Amade, a professor of civil engineering at the University of Colorado Boulder. How are you guys doing with your projects? The French-born Amade founded the nonprofit Engineers Without Borders in 2000 after some landscapers from Belize working at his home urged him to visit their villages to help ease poverty. One of them really changed my life, the village of San Pablo, where I noticed a lot of little girls, young girls, who were carrying water. That was their job, from the river to the village, back and forth, back and forth. And as a result, they could not go to school. It broke my heart, and, and I decided that I was going to do something about it. With the help of colleagues and students, Amade designed a water pump that brought water directly to San Pablo and freed the girls so they could attend school. The experience sparked a change in Amade. For me, it was an epiphany, a way for me to realize that engineering was not just technical solutions or providing technical solutions. It, was, it had a very strong social component. What evolved from the project was a new type of engineering. I thought, well, that would be pretty neat if I could um, start a new area of engineering, if you want to call it, small-scale engineering, engineering with a human face, and get students involved. Since its inception, Engineers Without Borders USA has grown to 8,000 volunteer members in more than 200 chapters. Currently, they are working on 250 projects in 43 different nations. We also have a number of assessment trips that are coming through as well. So Meg Van Skyver is the senior project manager. The mission is uh, to provide uh, humanitarian engineering projects for communities' self-identified needs. So we want to make sure that they're, they're what the community wants um, and what they need and not what uh, you know the NGO going in thinks that they need. That's the most difficult part. How do we make sure that whatever technology we bring over, whatever solution we bring over, is appropriate to the community, that's respectful of the community, respectful of the culture, respectful of the people, does not divide people, creates more unity, more peace in the community. That's one thing. But also, how do we make sure that uh, the people understand the technology, can fix it, and how does it, and how the technology can actually um, provide opportunities for the community in terms of creating jobs, creating uh, businesses, so, the, so the, the community itself can get out of poverty itself, not, not, um, not with any outside help. To ensure the projects are designed specifically for the communities, engineers travel abroad meeting villagers and seeing their needs firsthand. Then they design and fundraise for the individual projects. But the major challenge is to change the mindset of the engineers themselves. It's actually a little bit outside sometimes the realm of some engineer's uh, comfort zone. Used to sitting in front of a computer or something like that and designing something and now they're going out into communities and actually helping with people and um, really trying to understand other cultures and I think that's something that really diversifies uh, you know the, the engineering base. Usually anything that deals with feelings and the heart and love or whatever you want is not something that engineers are known to do. You know, we are hardcore technicians, nerdy at times, it's true for some people. Um, but all of a sudden, we bring here a different type of engineering. You cannot do engineers without borders work if you don't bring your heart into it. Carrie McClelland is a third-year graduate student in Colorado's engineering program. She says working on a bridge project in Haiti changed how she approaches problems. The world is a place now where engineers do need to consider the world and they need to consider people. You can't just consider your your numbers and your designs anymore. Um, it, it uh, I think it's just essential. So it's it's been really broadening, a really broadening experience and helped me open my mind and and uh, consider different ways to do things. You know how five? Amade says his work has changed the way he sees the world and himself. I see more smiles. 
in a small village in Africa in one day that I see on the engineering campus in one year. What is it that people have that we don't have? So it's not me bringing some solutions. It's me working partnership with people and, and those communities that I'm helping with are also offering me so much. It's unbelievable. It's making me a better human being, a better dad, a better friend, a better husband, a better colleague. That's the bottom line. In October, Amade received a Heinz Award with $125,000 for individual achievement in the environment. He plans to use his award money to build a network of vocational schools around the globe to develop the next generation of engineers.